Welcome to Gas Grass Rass 007 Gaming. This is the last time I'm going to try to do this video <clears throat> for this replay. If it doesn't work, I'm probably just going to delete this replay and try another replay because I think I figured out what was making it lag to begin with, and I think that was Skype. Skype, for some reason, my computer logged off last night and restarted. So Skype automatically starts with your freaking computer. Excuse my French, but Skype really pisses me off. <clears throat> and, you know, they, Skype uses tons of resources. But, uh, my opponent today is Kaiman27. Good game to him. And I'm going to have two units of Bow Ashigar, one unit of Foot Samurai, one unit of Bow Samurai, one unit of Lone Sword Ashigaru, one unit of Katana Samurai, one unit of Naginata Samurai, one unit of Bulletproof Samurai, and one unit of Yari Samurai. Cavalry consists of two units of light cavalry and one unit of mounted Naginata. <coughs> His army consists of one unit of Yari cavalry, one unit of mounted Naginata, four units of Boashigaru, five, I think it's six units of Yari samurai, three units of Katana samurai, and one unit of sword attendants. Now, what I'm going to do here is he's going to come and capture this point where he is actually going to capture it. And I'm going to notice that here. And he actually does it with his cavalry, so he dismounts his cavalry to capture it. So I'm going to take advantage of that and I'm going to charge with my cavalry. And because of the bow units are so close and my cavalry takes so much so many casualties that I just commit to it because I realize there is no point in retreating at that point and I commit I am committed to what I'm doing <laughs> so I continue the attack until all of my cavalry retreats or withdrawal however you want to put it See if I can get the charge here. And I am getting considerably better frame rate since I got rid of Skype out of the background. And I went in and took out a couple other programs that I wasn't using. So according to my computer, I'm only using like 30 something, 36% of my memory. So this video should be relatively lag free here comes my charge and because he's in the middle of trying to mount his horses they take a huge amount of ca casualties Get a close up, you see the arrows coming in. So retarded, my 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 horsemen were like stopped by three of theirs. I charged that unit of Bo Ashigaru just to try to get some extra casualties going. There's my carnage. The reason I do pick this cliff is because I realize that he gets both... I realized doing this, setting up my army here, before we started the match, that he was going to capture both strategic points. I really had no control over that. So I was like, 
those of you that play Shogun know that the strate strategic points are actually a huge bonus factor in gameplay. So I decided to take this hill and attempt to even the bonuses, the strategic bonuses that each of us have. A couple points I do want to make for those of you that might be new to this game or just haven't used these tactics before because I never really thought about it. The bow units, if you hide them in the woods, they do take a penalty bonus, or bleh, a combat penalty. But I noticed that if you're doing bow and bow units and you're in the woods here, the combat penalty is almost worth it because the trees really shield you from archery fire or mash lock fire. Make sure that you loosen your units as well. I don't hear just because I know my units and I know they were going to be okay that I didn't loosen them. It's another thing to make sure you know your army. Know the units that you, that you use and make sure you know how you've leveled each unit and things like that when you go into a battle. It's going to greatly increase your chances of winning. Another thing I've noticed too that if you stretch your unit out, like I have my Bulletproof Samurai, and they have... If you would send four units after me, up this hill, let's say, and I had that one Bulletproof Samurai unit stretched out like that, now normally I wouldn't use such a powerful unit, it'd probably be more one of my weaker units, because obviously I'm sending them to their death. But if you have them stretched out like that, and charge those four units, like if they're set up like these archers are about to be set up, or the Boashigaru are about to be set up, and you stretch them as long as that line of Boashigaru, let's say they charge me, if I charge them for some reason I decided I needed to get better positioning for my army, I would take a weaker unit like the, the, um, the Lone Sword Ashigaru <coughs> and click in the middle here to attack and charge them. What's going to happen then is my unit of Lone Sword, or Lone Sword Ashigaru are going to hit the entire line of all four of those units of Bow Ashigaru. So it's going to buy me enough time that I could reposition my army and get a better, whatever I thought would be a better strategic position for the battle. And it's one of the good things about using that tactic. You'll see me use that tactic a lot. Not only when I'm trying to reposition my army, but when I'm actually battling, because because I do have a very upgraded army, very leveled up army, my units cost a lot of money, so a lot of times when I go into a battle, I'm going into a battle where I have like 10 units and the other guy has 20. So I use the lines like you see me set up right now to kind of even that playing field so they can't really flank me and things like that. You actually see how effective it is once they start attacking up here. Let me fast forward to the bow battle I was telling you about. So don't really I will try to read the War of Art of War at some point so I can give you guys a little bit of historical commentary as well with this, not just my battle commentary. As you see right here he repositions a third of his army over here so I take some of my more powerful units thinking or at the time I was thinking he would probably attack most of his army on this side of the hill so I was going to use these units and obviously I know he did do that because you know I played the battle I've watched the replay I was going to use these units as a method to buy time um, just in case they weren't strong enough to you know take on this part of the army I was going to use them to buy enough time to try to win this area here and then reposition my army to take on whatever's left over on this side now he does make a mistake here let me get to the bow battle he does make a mistake here and I will point it out and a lot of my tips that you'll see for this game to give you guys will be for bow units because my clan specializes in bow units so you know if you do like bow units and like I said in the video previous to this if you do like bow units my steam group is gas grass or ass 007 gaming so if you want to be part of my clan on Shogun 2 Total War I will greatly appreciate that 
One thing he does here that is kind of a bad thing to do. My range for my Ashigaru, I believe, I make a mistake here too. I charge thinking that these guys, he's going to keep these, these bow units there. Blah. Can't talk. I think he's going to keep these bow units there because the guy I played before that did. <clears throat> but he doesn't. I realize my mistake and I retreat. But the mistake he makes here is I'm pretty sure my Ashigaru range goes to about the top of this little mound right here where my mouse is. Um, he keeps doing this. Coming down, shooting, retreating back up, coming down, shooting, retreating back up. And that's a good tactic if he was, say, right here on the edge of my Ashigaru's range. Because by the time they would turn around and get up the hill, the arrows would all... 90% of the arrows would just hit the ground behind them. You know, I might hit one or two of his guys, but that's it. But he comes down all the way into my range, and then some. And, um... When you retreat like that, you turn around and start running up the hill and a rain of arrows will come into your guys. And that's how he took 90% of his casualties for his bow units because the backs were facing my guys. So the weakest armor and everything is on the back of your people. And, you know, when he turned around and ran up the hill, like 10 or 15 of his guys would go down. What he should have done from the start was sit here with his bow units and probably just charge. Because he knows I'm not going to move. And it would have been a little easier because I am outnumbered for him to just kind of split up having an even amount of sword and spear units on each side of the thing. Or attacking all one side instead of two sides. Because that gives me time to reposition my army, get a better strategic defensive position and things like that which you don't want your opponent to do you always want to keep your army moving whether it's moving back and forth or going to an actual position or charging and things like that always want to keep the pl other player thinking about what you're going to do and I do attempt to entice him to attack on the side which does not work <coughs> with my general using him as bait but doesn't work works on this side though because I do dismount him and he was already going to charge at that point, and he realized I dismounted my general, so he just committed to the charge. Fortunately, I had time to remount my general and get him out of the way. I love this game, too, because of the detail. Like, look at all the arrows in the ground right there, and they actually draw back the bowstring. The tactic of uh, stretching out your units like that, actually, from what I understand, Unless they updated it, does work in Rome 2 Total War as well. You'll hear Arab Carthage actually do a, a special video on that. If you follow Arab Carthage or Prince of Macedon. I do love the water in this game too. I don't know. I just like Shogun way better than Rome. I don't know why. Probably because I've been playing it for almost two years now, and I know all the units and all the special abilities and how to utilize each unit and things like that. As you see, I repositioned back up the top of the hill because I realized he wasn't going to fall for <coughs> my bait, basically. Let me fast forward to the final stage of this battle, where he charges with his spear unit gonna lag a little bit right here because I am fast forwarding it and it might lag a little bit but I'm gonna upload this regardless of whatever happens as long as the battles are intact so please bear with me it's just this replay I don't know why this replay wants to act this way but I've done test runs and stuff with some of my other replays that are just as long and have just as big of battles and I do not get this much lag so here's where he makes one of the mistakes too he should have had his bow units down here before he started charging. He realizes this mistake, tries to retreat, reposition his bow units, and then, like I said, I dismount my, I dismount my general unit, and he turns around and goes, "Okay, I'm gonna charge." And then we'll watch him charge up the hill here and watch the collision between the two armies because I love watching people charge uphill. There's actually a couple battles where I've charged uphill and actually won. One of them being medieval two. I had the Scottish army with all the... I had like a bunch of two-handed 
sword wielding Scottish armies in medieval two and uh, units. And I charged up a hill that was kind of like that, maybe a little steeper, and actually won the battle. Mostly because there was trees there. That's what was my saving grace in that battle. But now he's going to charge up the hill, and this is going to be a pretty epic showdown here because the whole line of trees right here is going to be covered with people fighting and arrows and things like that. This is by far my favorite replay, that's why I've done this so many times. If it wasn't my favorite replay, I would have done this twice and just gave up and tried a different replay. But let's get to the battle. Here we go, here we go. And it's epic. Epic. As I go along, try to get some sword fighting and stuff in for you guys. There we go. Oh, oh. One of my guys died. That guy just killed somebody. Get some over here. Now the next mistake he does make is he charges a general right there into the battle. I don't think he thought his guys were going to retreat as fast as they did. I think that's why he did that. But they did, and then I charged into him with my other units, so. It's kind of a mistake, but I have an idea of what he was trying to think of doing there. Just totally backfired on him. And then I charged down here to his bow units. It's great going back and watching these videos sometimes too because I'll notice things that I didn't notice before like fights and stuff that I actually caught on screen that I didn't notice I caught. And here's the final skirmish. As you see I brought my katana samurai over here to face his. Got some flaming arrows in there. He brings what's left of his cavalry over, but my spearmen make short work of him. Which is my Yari Samurai. Get some katana sword action. That was pretty cool. I think he does eventually charge his... Yeah. Sword attendants back in. Yeah, this is pretty epic battle, I think. So yeah, here come the sword attendants charging back in. Each of the battles lasted a pretty lengthy amount of time, and there goes one of my my Yari samurai. You know, who, who's running? Oh, my katana samurai started running, but eventually his troops see my the rest of my army coming and I will show you the carnage here there's bodies everywhere right there and on the hill 
over here. Bodies everywhere, horses all the way up the hill. That was my replay for today. Let's check out the battle results. <coughs> Hopefully this doesn't lag this time because I did disable pretty much all of my background programs and I put all the environment graphics down to medium. So Hopefully you can get a pretty decent lag-free replay going here. Kind of sucks because I had interesting conversation for the whole video the first time I did this, but now that I've done it like four times, I kind of had it down pack and knew what I wanted to talk about. So like in the first 15 minutes of the 21-minute battle, I had covered everything I wanted to cover. Um, here's that and unit statistics. My Lone Sword Ashigaru and Bulletproof Samurai come away with the highest kills of the day and the most experience gained with 306 kills for the Lone Sword, 892 experience, Bulletproof Samurai, 652 experience, and 295 kills. His highest kill for a unit was 40, 54 with his Bow Ashigaru. But that's my Total War Shogun 2 replay for today, and... I'm looking forward to seeing you on my next Total War Shogun 2 replay, which will be sometime soon, hopefully. But until next time, this is Gas Grass or Ass 007 Gaming signing out, and looking forward to seeing you on my next Total War Shogun 2 replay.